My name is Igor Agamerzian. Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me well? Or uh, I am not sure whether you can all hear me well and how well uh, this uh, mic translates my voice. So let me brief you on the history of this report. So we're going to discuss the National Report on Innovations in Russia. This work was requested by the government of uh, Russia and uh, after they had met the members of the expert council under uh, the government of Russia. This happened in uh, June 2014. And finally, uh, the government uh, entrusted uh, the expert council to, to launch this work. And it set some priorities in the area of innovations. The National Report on Innovations is a traditional mechanism. It is used in many countries developing innovations and the national systems of innovations. Primarily, this activity must be regular and it is especially valuable uh, when uh, it is uh, done permanently during some period and includes uh, the review of the current state and uh, compares the changes after this period expires. This is not the strategy of innovations, uh, though uh, strategies are used uh, for, uh, to, as the basis of this report or are used to adjust it. The strategy was uh, developed uh, in uh, 2015, and uh, so the report uh, was developed in 2015 concurrently with the strategy. Or well, actually, it was the final version of the strategy. The first version of the report was discussed at the Open Innovations Forum in late October 2015. And since then, during these uh, several months, we have gathered public opinions and uh, proposals, suggestions. In, in some time, when uh, the, this uh, discussion is uh, concluded, we will submit it to the uh, Council on Modernization, and I'm sure it will be considered for developing new strategy documents. I'm sure that this work will become regular, and as I said, uh, it uh, will be done during a long period, and it will enable us to compare our current and past achievements. Now we have here the representatives of uh, the government, uh, the executive branch, the federal branch, the representatives of business consulting. And uh, let me first give the floor to Vladislav Butenka, our respectable colleague. He will brief you on the results of our report. I can see that many of you are holding this blue book with the report. It was published long um, ago at our website in the digital form. Now we have booklets too. And uh, then uh, let's open our discussion. So Vladislav Butenko representing Boston Consulting Group.
Коллеги, а кто техническое обеспечение обеспечивает? Switch on the presentation. Мы в реальном времени занимаемся инновацией, посмотрим, работает ли так. We are indeed launching an innovation. Let's see whether this mode works or not. So the innovation has been enacted. Good morning, dear colleagues. And uh, let me greet you on the coming old new year, which is in itself an interesting one combination. In fact, this is another innovation. I'm senior partner of Boston Consulting Group. My name is Vladislav Butenko, and I'm privileged to lead this project that was developed in collaboration with the Ministry for uh, Social and Economic Development. Why does Russia need this report of innovation? This is going to be the first question I will address. The second question I will talk about is life after innovations. So what will happen in 20 or 25 years to innovations and our life? Let me comment. There's no sound, first of all. I have to bend to the microphone. Is it okay? Is the sound okay? So there's no sound and there's no light. The two core feelings do not work. Now we have both light and sound. We are okay. Then, what, what are the achievements of uh, leading, uh, the countries leading in innovations? How far are we behind? And finally, the final question is what to do? This innovation report is going was done on the request of Russia's government and the ministry. And the goal was to create a new dr driving impulse for the development of the country's economy. What is the structure of this report? And what is it? This is a tool to adjust our direction of development. This is not exactly a strategy, but this is something like an annual snapshot. It helps us to assess the current status of innovations, what has been done and what not. And in the next year, we will have a new report. So it helps us to trace our development. If the trend is positive, it's OK. If it's negative, we have to take measures. This report on innovations uh, cannot substitute for uh, the government's policy. The first circle is uh, in the, at the top of the slide stands for the strategy. And uh, the other one is uh, our report. So the strategy is a plan to be implemented. Now, let me brief you on the terms. What is innovations? And why do innovations help to accelerate economic growth? The innovations help uh, to enhance the uh, labor productivity, provided we have the same equipment. You can see uh, there are two, the two pictures uh, a cab with two horses and uh, a car. The capital intensity is the same. The human resources are the same as well because uh, each of the vehicles requires one person or one driver. But uh, I think you agree that uh, the car is uh, uh, a very good innovation of the 20th century. 
Uh, so the cargo intensity is roughly the same, but a car is more efficient. And if you have to transport cargo from one place to another, you can load uh, threefold uh, more cargo into a car. And if you equip the whole country with cars, the GDP, which is unfortunately diminishing in Russia now, will increase. So it means that innovations help to develop and accelerate economy. Where are we now? The GDP is defined by uh, four tools. We can read them from the right to the left. The first one is the number of populations, and number four is how much they work. Number three is uh, capital intensity, uh, how much money we have. Number two is the quality of workforce. Clearly, some people work better than others. Also, they work when they are better organized. And uh, the final factor is the general labor productivity. Unfortunately, the innovations in Russia currently are the only tool to increase the well-being of people. Why so? Well, let me read the reasons from the left to the right. The number of population is uh, reducing, and this process started in 26. Uh, the second factor is the outflow of capital, which reduces capital intensity, and uh, the, in, the loading of uh, all capacities is quite high. I mean all enterprises, plants, and the total infrastructure. In the recent 20 years, uh, it used to be 73%, and now it is uh, 63% only. So some of them stay idle. And uh, the next factor is the deterioration of workforce. Uh, the current workforce was created in the 90s, and the quality currently leaves much to be desired. However, what has been done in Russia in the field of innovation? We now have the strategy of innovations development, and uh, the quality is improving, and uh, the strategy has been developed uh, in collaboration by Russian venture company, a Skolkova fund, and other funds. And uh, so the country indeed paid due attention to innovations. However, how about meeting our expectations? I'm not sure about that. I don't think uh, that it really matches our expectations. Well, what about the output of innovation products? Russia is behind the goal by a threefold, so the announced goal was 25%. Uh, this uh, is the share of uh, the planned share of innovation product, but the real share is only 7%. We also lag behind China and uh, the USA by uh, 25, uh, 25 fold and uh, 5 fold in uh, the area of innovation expert. So this when we export high-tech and innovation uh, products, we generate some income in uh, dollars. And our current share is 0.4%, uh, while China uh, exports uh, one-fourth of the global share of innovation products. Why so? Let's look at the so-called pyramid of innovations. Innovations are never created in some empty uh, place and never start from scratch. They are bred by well-developed countries, and they need some foundations. These foundations is normally 
the protection of property, intellectual property, I mean. If you invent something, uh, this intellectual property must belong to you. For instance, uh, let's recall a famous U.S. pop star, Madonna. Why is her She has the 25 billion dollars and this is only due to her intellectual property because uh, each of her sold uh, CD uh, generates uh, 20 or uh, 25 dollars. Uh, similarly, all uh, inventors must receive money for their intellectual property and inventions. <coughs> Russia uh, has the so-called inverted pyramid. Let's look at other countries. Uh, their pyramids have other shapes, something like an Egyptian pyramid or a pyramid uh, with uh, a dome. Innovations are not do not mean that you will get the result immediately. Normally, this is long-lasting process. Some of the new ideas die. Later on, uh, they proceed to the commercial stage. And uh, finally, they um, are converted into products and only the best ideas survive. Let's look at this page. You don't have to read all details. And uh, you, uh, this diagram is included in your reports. Let's just look at the red color. There are about 50 indicators, and they are all highlighted in red. Uh, these are comparisons, the comparisons of Russian results to our expectations or to other countries. Unfortunately, uh, they indicate that Russia is not always in a good shape. In terms of the GDP and uh, Russia, uh, in terms of uh, the inputs uh, into innovations, Russia occupies one of the first places. It means that it spends a lot on R&D. However, the returns are very low. Normally, uh, the returns on state expenses are low. This is typical not just of Russia, but of other countries too while private investors are more concerned about the results of their input. These R&D exp expenses are growing in Russia. However, the number of inventions is going down. You can trace it in uh, this diagram. Let's take, for instance, uh, one billion uh, rubles of uh, expenses, the returns are really low. Here's another bottleneck. Uh, this is uh, our venture investment into R&D and innovations. You can see a curve in this graph, and we are below this curve. So far, uh, we have only few leaders, like uh, Russian Venture Company and some other companies. Otherwise, uh, we don't have private investors into innovations. And now, who deals with innovations? Are these really the best scholars? Let's compare the salaries and uh, their uh, consumption index. We can see that Russia occupies one of the last places in the world. Their purchasing power is very low indeed, and their salaries too. 
The obvious conclusion is that uh, they are insufficiently paid. It means that intending scholars or future scholars will not follow their example and will choose some other career. So it means uh, that uh, the difference between Russia and uh, the USA are 20 to 80. From the left to the right, you can see that 80% of the respondents in the USA answered the question about their children, whether they would like to become a scholar. They said yes. And in Russia, they said no. It was only 20%. And the last observation before we go over to conclusions and discussion. How do countries define technological priorities? Their traditional target, uh, targeted approach is the interests of the states. They date back to the 50s, 60s, and 70s, large construction sites, uh, space, uh, and other huge uh, construction sites. And then uh, we started to deal with large uh, uh, sectoral construction, like medicine, after prom, car production. Now we have the new uh, uh, super system approach. The developed countries are in the fifth round of such approaches. And whereas we are staying in the within the traditional uh, targeted approach, industrial approach. That is, we are somewhere back in the 80s. So these are the ideas we presented several times. Those were our observations. And now, as Igor said, we had public discussions. And I would like to share certain ideas coming from the public discussion in similar audiences like here. What did people tell us? Here are a few measures that were mentioned by them. That is the main thesis that we hear is that for the success of innovation, it's not sufficient to optimize state support. It is necessary to absolutely uh, change the system of incentive, competence, and relationships of uh, market participants in the Russian Federation. That is full opening a market and uh, providing finances to innovation companies. Uh, many people have a lot of savings now. What should we do, uh, like in other countries, so that people should not leave their money on the deposits, but uh, could be sent via uh, venture companies to innovative companies, the full opening of productive production markets, while well, working with human uh, capital, so the brand of a scientist, of an engineer. Back in the Soviet Union, a scientist, a scholar, an engineer, uh, was something uh, uh, cherished. Now it is not so. So we should pay attention to education and uh, bonuses, uh, uh, giving a reputation, a career growth uh, uh, for result. Support of export of high-tech products. If a high-tech company produces something in Russia, uh, we should probably uh, open up horizons for it, help it with the uh, sales abroad, etc., etc. Redefining the uh, goal setting in the state support mechanism in terms of result, output, and control of results. Interestingly, so providing um, a real responsibility for results of innovation. There should be a board of directors uh, of, uh, for innovations in the state companies uh, changing the time horizon of uh, CEOs and ministers staying in power. It takes five to seven years. Sometimes general directors manage to do something good in two or three years, but then they had to uh, change their place of job, and it's uh, uh, no good for, the, for them and for the business. Responsibility for the results of innovations, well, uh, liability for the results, outside the horizon of the labor agreement. For instance, if somebody did something and shifted jobs, but said, no, what did, you, what did you do when you were at this post, at this job, what are the results? Enhancing trust between the population, innovative companies, and the uh, state bodies, including the uh, 
a probabilistic success of innovations. I was in Silicon Valley early, in early 2000s. The first venture capitalists came to Russia and they complained. They say, we have oligarchs' money, we have private money. And it is clear that out of 10 uh, uh, inventions, there'll be one company. Out of 10 companies, one shall be successful. Uh, and out of 10 successful, there'll be one Google. What, uh, we said, we cannot guarantee the success, the Russians said, but do give us the money. It's necessary to improve understanding between uh, various participants. And the last annual monitoring of progress with objective measurements by sectors of economy, by regions of Russian Federation, and by major companies with uh, state participation. We know that if you, in, the, in this country, if companies and regions have to compete, they start working better. We did it. We saw it with the ratings of the investment climate and other ratings. So we have more ideas, but before winding up, let me tell you about the subsequent steps. We had a context while preparing this report. Today, uh, we have a three-month discussion period. Now there'll be a new version, a final version will come up. And we have another year to do something about it. And uh, at the end of the year, we shall have another report. And we see the improvements. Thank you. I thank you, Vladislav. Colleagues, let's go over to discussion, a panel discussion. I suggest that it be most informal. Probably you should take your seat and participate in the discussion together with everybody. And I, with your permission, shall take this place. Otherwise, I will not see other participants. Thank you. I hope everybody can hear me now. Today, our panel participants you see representatives of business, science, consulting, business. We were joined by Katerina Shapchkin from the Open Government. And I shall start with a question to Ekaterina. I hope that all participants of the panel discussion did read the uh, report, uh, it's, though it's very voluminous. So, in terms of the experts' uh, council, one of the objectives for the preparation of the report was to make a tool, an instrument panel, which will allow us to see the changes and absolute or relative characteristics over the entire spectrum of innovative development. So from the viewpoint of the open government, which is one of the participants in the innovative process, the indicators selected uh, for the report, are they valuable? Valuable enough to be translated into a broader context? not only for the sake of innovation, but to economics, to institutional domain, etc. Katerina, can you speak about this? Yes, good morning. First of all, I thank uh, RBC for being the permanent leader in the project. It was the initiator, the open government was initiator of the report at RVK was very enthusiastic in implementing this idea. Yes, I thank the company again for leading in the project. 
the open government was the initiator, but we're happy that the Institute of, Institutes of Development and RVK are very actively involved into this project. As for our position about the contents of the report, about the indicators uh, proposed, first of all, one of the problems, uh, well, it probably refers to consulting uh, and management, but still it is very important for everybody. So there's a lack of general dashboard for the Russian Federation. I'd like to cite uh, the European Union, which defined, developed the sustainable development strategy with five indicators to be taken into account by the countries and the EU. And then it was cascaded down to uh, countries, regions, and cities. We do have a problem with them, with this. We have about 2,000 uh, indicators in our programs and uh, impossible to monitor. Speaking about innovative indicators, the strategy of innovative development has about 47, uh, 46 of them, and some of them cannot be uh, monitored and are not taken into account by Rostat because it's very impossible to assess the progress in them. There are no responsible entities for some of these indicators, and how can you assess the progress? and who will be responsible for it, and who will be dismissed if these figures are not met. So whatever uh, has been done in the report, there was a certain dashboard was proposed. It's a step forward. It's a step forward uh, with regard to the attitude to all participants of the innovative uh, process. We believe that every participant of innovative process we are, have, have many of those universities, research institutions, technical parks. We have 112 uh, centers for transfers of technologies, regions, development institutes, state companies. All of them should understand their role in the, uh, the process, what is expected from them, and what they are responsible for, what are, they will be liable for. We should have such dashboard it should be cascaded top-down to all elements of the innovation system. The current proposed dashboard, the indicator dashboard, is oriented to best world practices. But the problem is that some indicators are not taken into account by Rostat, and we should have a methodology uh, compared with, well, probably we should borrow it from other countries and we should understand where we are. Some indicators, moreover, are subjective indicators. And there is always a, a nuance, a difficulty. Whom should we ask the same people or not the same people every year, etc. But still, this dashboard is a great step forward and we should do our best uh, so that this proposed uh, dashboard uh, should get a feedback from market participants. And we should be, it should be integrated to the um, strategy of innovative development the Ministry of Economic Development is working on, and uh, then it should be included into the Innovative Development Strategy 2030 we are discussing now, which we would like to start uh, developing in future. That's about it. Let me comment a little. I said uh, that the work on this national report started at the request of the uh, chairman of the government uh, as the result of the meeting of the experts council. There was also a request uh, about innovation statistics for Rostat. And I had a feeling that out of all uh, requests, that was the most unsuccessful. Uh, Rostat is not uh, prepared for this, uh, to collect statistics related to the innovative component of economic activities. That is why the problem related to the collection of information uh, is really facing us. How to make uh, to compose experts panels? Uh, 
to provide for information uh, from the surveys. It's not clear. Uh, we do not have a systematic methodology uh, that uh, has been used for a certain period of time. But what is important in my as I think, we are talking about in the innovative indicators, innovative uh, parameters about the dashboard. As for, do we have a dashboard for the entire uh, economic sector? There's a parallel session strategy 2020-2030, that is the strategy for economic development, and I hope this question will be discussed uh, over there. In terms of uh, managers, and here, I'm speaking not as a public servant, but as a businessman. And in terms of management in any large business, the possibility to promptly see a management reporting as like dashboard, as we say it, that is absolutely critical to ensure the efficiency of business operation. I have a feeling that it's a general trend in all, at least, developed countries. So the uh, uh, public management borrows uh, something developed in the corporate business because all of this was uh, shaped in uh, 70s, 80s by major uh, corporations. And I think it's a positive process because uh, it started here in Russia uh, in the domain of innovations. We are moving uh, uh, fast enough and the improvement of public administration uh, shows that the innovation process is underway. My deputy, Arviki, he was in charge of this project, and he is in the know of what's happening even in adjacent activities. What is the place of the national uh, report on in innovations in the entire system of strategic documents and initiatives that are taking place in Russia along these lines. Thank you very much. The national report was not the first activity we conducted at the request of the Prime Minister. And before this, we made some preliminary uh, documents, and the main conclusion was that there's a catastrophic gap between different policies and instruments that existed in different times and in different uh, bodies which were created and launched in the sphere of innovation. By the year 2015, we found ourselves in the situation when several dozens of the programs have been developed but not coordinated, either regarding targets, priorities, results, or ideologies. And we had two typical uh, conflicts that arise at the level of uh, objects and regions because of these differences. The first type of conflict is that the same innovative object, like a technopark, becomes participant, participant in different support uh, programs. In one program, it's technopark. In the other program, support program, it's some special zone. Uh, it turns out that the same people, the same object, gets different people, but provide the same results. Well, it's not good on the, on the one hand, because this concentration uh, made some um, projects very successful, like in Novosibirsk. But on the other hand, this does not allow us to see the efficiency, the performance of the program, whether it was technopark park or engineering center or collective use center, which was a success really. But there's another more dangerous type of conflict that when there were competing uh, uh, objects, uh, competing projects, which received money uh, uh, and they compete 
uh, they had conflicts with each other and they started to compete for startups and the quality of both structures were, uh, was not high enough. And it became clear that the key problem in the rush in our two system is lack of coordination, lack of throughput indicators. For instance, in the university development program, you should take into account synergy with the innovative infrastructure and technoparks should uh, 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 should uh, provide support to start up from universities. Now I believe that uh, due to the work of the open government and other coordination uh, forums, we see and the Ministry of Economy uh, paid a lot of attention to it, we see the mutual penetration of ideologies and indicators between these programs. The national report is a key to binding different policies and other tools and indicating their interrelations. Our main goal was to create the so-called functional model. We wanted to, to clearly understand which tool is needed at which stage and uh, uh, what effects uh, it will give and uh, what will happen if it is absent. One of our major problems is lack of understanding. Sometimes we can't understand why this or that program has failed, whether it was improperly prepared or whether it is because of uh, insufficient support. Uh, if uh, quite often one default leads to the failure of everything else, and uh, hence our dashboard project is very important. I can uh, give you one example from practice. Recently, uh, Russia uh, occupied the second or the third uh, place in Europe in venture investment. It was several years ago. However, investors complained that uh, uh, most of the projects were of poor quality. There was a clear lack of high quality projects. And um, right now, startups are getting uh, very cheap and uh, other investors uh, were competing for high quality projects. They continually complained of the quality of projects. Uh, while these high quality projects uh, were supposed to be initiated by universities, R&D centers, and uh, other similar institutions. So uh, one fault led uh, to the failure of many other elements of the whole process. And we are experiencing a similar situation now. We really lack high quality projects. That's why many people are looking for these projects in the Silicon Valley or Singapore. And uh, let me conclude with one very important conclusion also based on our preliminary work done jointly with Strategy Partners Group. Talking about innovation policies, we uh, probably um, overlook the uh, technological policy. While a technical policy should be prior to innovations policy, technical or technological uh, policy should be our basic element and the foundation for a startup, for brokers. It uh, may help us to involve uh, more players and uh, attract more investment. We need to create a new class of players. So this technical policy or the transfer, uh, we need to transit uh, from uh, the R&D sector to uh, the industrial sector. This is done via the channel of technologies. And this element uh, is really poor in Russia, and it's not properly coordinated. Uh, we don't have a proper chain of um, elements from R&D or science to the product. Uh, we don't have proper correlation 
between industrial and R&D policies, or it's the so-called valley of death, and or dead valley, and no need to fill in uh, this um, dead valley uh, with uh, certain elements, and we need to properly transit from uh, one stage to another one. And how can we fill it in? This uh, may be done uh, via uh, support, uh, via different uh, caravans, and so on. And this should not be uh, done at random. This needs to be a regular uh, process. Uh, we need to uh, identify all possible links indicated and define how it will work. What about indicators? Sometimes a positive indicator may kill the overall result. No one doubts that the number of patents is a positive indicator. Another one is the number of articles in reputable uh, journals. And uh, one of our, uh, do, are you all aware with the uh, uh, Five uh, 100 program? Yes, we are. So one of the indicators of this program is publications. And uh, now the professors are motivated to publish their articles in journals. However, after this article has been published, it becomes a public domain. It, this is no longer his personal intellectual property. Therefore, we lose patents. Many professors are motivated to get a reward for his article than to have all that headache with patents. There's another indicator. It's uh, figures. It's the number of national patents. After some idea becomes a national patent, it takes up a long time. And uh, uh, so we lose time before this invention becomes an international patent. And we need to develop the procedure of uh, getting international patents. Uh, if we don't have it, uh, we just lose time and lose money. Also, the quality of our startup technologies goes down too. There's a big gap between the indicators and the real state of things in the system. Sometimes the indicators may be positive while the state of the system may be negative. And uh, sometimes uh, some indicators are meaningless. We uh, need uh, to make them meaningful. They should uh, reflect the true uh, state of things. We know that uh, sometimes uh, Russian inventors get only two international patents per uh, one year and uh, the, uh, per company, and uh, this is really a very low figure. Uh, let me make just two comments on what you said. I fully agree with uh, what you said about the gap between the innovation policy and the technical policy. There's no proper link between them, indeed. And uh, we need to establish a link between the industrial uh, or technical and the innovation policy. Otherwise, uh, we are starting uh, from the demand from, or rather, not from the demand, we are starting uh, from the supply, but not from the demand, and it should be vice versa. I know, well, I really hate the word uh, implementation or introduction, 
Uh, as, uh, as far as I remember, the USSR time, useless things were often introduced and useless inventions, while all our inventions should be those demanded and needed by the people. This I am very, very much like uh, the National Technical Initiative concept. This was the first Russia's attempt to uh, develop a technical policy based on uh, the demand and not on the supply, and to define uh, the demand for technologies. So it is based on the final consumer and on the market. Also, it covers the whole production cycle, starting from the R&D stage. Our next speaker will be Ruslan Yunusov. He is the CEO of Russian Quantum Center. The quantum science in Russia, if I'm right, is something like an applied science and it has not reached the commercial stage yet. But do you think that it is demanded by a certain market and certain consumers? And uh, how can this, uh, how does this demand fit into the current system of innovations? How is it related to other elements of the system? Thank you for your question. This technology, indeed, is in the forefront of innovations and technologies. And uh, it's really on the border between technologies and innovations. However, I can't say that it is too far from the market. There are some quantum devices like uh, quantum cryptographer. And uh, this is a real device which may be installed at enterprises, uh, laboratories, and uh, it's not just an R&D invention. So I think that gradually it is applied in production. Quantum sensors are going to be introduced in the near future. They are very sensitive. And uh, I think uh, they will appear in the Internet of Things. Uh, let me say a few words on the report. We really tried to transit from some fundamental science to applied studies and uh, the generation of startups. In the recent years, we faced the problem of culture, which is very significant in Russia. We indeed have outstanding scientists and talented people, and uh, they certainly want uh, to create a, a device or a sensor. They want uh, their studies uh, to be reflected in some specific device. But this does not always happen in the market. That's why uh, we created this uh, Mobis uh, project, uh, which is something like an incubator of startups. I agree with the previous presenters. We probably now should focus on the lower parts of the innovation pyramid. We should focus on the culture and on technologies. We, uh, for instance, uh, many technologies are developed now in Russia. And quite often, the R&D stage is done in Russia. The ideas appear in Russia, too. However, the production is located elsewhere in China or in Japan or in other places. And uh, uh, that's why these innovations do not generate any returns. And uh, we should focus on that. I think uh, the first uh, uh, 
stage has or five years has expired. The first five years was something like a venture um, period uh, when uh, we only got uh, proceeds uh, from our ideas. But now we're entering a new stage uh, and uh, we should focus on production. Therefore, we should develop some new KPIs indicating the stage of uh, innovations. And this could be interesting for many people. We have uh, some outstanding students and uh, we have still a problem with the scholars. Well, thank you. You have indicated a very sore point. I'm a member of the International Council on uh, 5-100 program. I fully agree with you that we need to pay more attention uh, to the motivation and uh, to involving the academic, academic circles into uh, industrial sectors, not necessarily industrial production, but uh, just in the industrial modern environment. I fully agree uh, our ideas and our students shouldn't uh, exist in some vacuum. But as to preparedness of universities for this stage, uh, it's not so advanced. This is a bilateral uh, problem. One end of this problem is related to the state of industry. Some of you have mentioned uh, one company, two companies, and uh, one company which has uh, won only two international patents over a uh, one-year period. This is an institutional problem. It's related to the lack of competition, excessive uh, regulation. However, universities are not yet ready to interact with uh, the industry, excluding uh, some state uh, procurement, uh, state procured works. Uh, this system appeared back in the USSR and it still exists. Otherwise, there are no forms of cooperation or interaction. This is really so, and I think we need some open spaces for generation, integration, and the communication between industries and the universities. These are going to be our growth spots. I agree, and uh, I, I think there should be some center university and this university will become a leader in the industry. And uh, it could be the leader of the whole territorial industrial uh, cluster. So, uh, in other words, universities now uh, should act as system integrators. However, I can't uh, quote, I can't name any Russian university which could perform this role. We can't hope that a big company like Gazprom will play this role or create this uh, space for communication. Yes, and uh, this could be one of our objectives. And uh, this could be another focus of our national report on innovations. I think uh, we should find some new KPIs that would help to properly assess the process. Getting back to KPIs, let me now give the floor to Alexander Idrisov. He represents a strategy partners group and he's president of this company. He has dealt with the KPIs in the corporate environment for many years. He 
has dealt with the corporate management and the state management. And uh, he probably knows how the management of a company may affect the management of the whole economy in the country. What is your view of uh, so what's your view on uh, the national report and uh, on the management system, management accounting? How uh, what about the best practices of strategic management? Actually, there are a lot of uh, instruments and uh, approaches coming from the corporate sector. So um, corporations become the center of innovations in uh, management. So I shall speak somewhat about uh, innovations. We have a somewhat alternative viewpoint. We provided our conclusion a few uh, months ago. We were happy that the report uh, came uh, out in December, which coincided with our conclusion. Uh, let's read the OECD strategy, which was published in December. Uh, and you should pay attention to this. They provide an adequate assessment. They have a section devoted to Russia, Mexico, and China, which is very interesting, which, is, uh, which seems very important to me about KPIs. This, the definition of innovations or innovations, there is a great problem of definitions in the country, uh, speaking about innovations. And probably it makes sense to give a better definition. I looked in the network. The first thesis that you see is like this. Innovation is far uh, away from what is being done in laboratories. It's remote from it. So I've been speaking about this for many years. Innovation is not a process of creating knowledge. It's only part of the innovation process. It's not the process of creating knowledge. It's turning knowledge into value for a consumer. You can get knowledge very close. Uh, they are created in this country. If we have good uh, education, good research, fundamental research, if we have a source of knowledge, you can borrow uh, knowledge from other countries, from other places. But uh, knowing how to turn knowledge into a value for the consumer, that is to create effective business models which allow us to uh, reach uh, certain goals like profit, that is something which, uh, which is called an innovative process. The target of the innovative process, it was pointed out in the report, uh, is something related to productivity, that innovation is part and parcel of this process, the process of um, affecting productivity. But there are two components in this. The value for the consumers in economics can be proceeds, reduction costs, uh, enhancing the efficiency of using assets and resources. The value for the social sphere is the quality of services to a clinic, uh, wherever you have the innovation process. So innovation is not only something which is done in laboratories. Let me reiterate it again. This is a vulgar uh, uh, presentation of the innovative uh, process. It's very limited. And it uh, now uh, a great section is lost in the innovative policy of, uh, policy of Russia, which does exist in other countries like innovations and corporations. It's not accident, uh, accidental that Ekaterina said there are many participants uh, in the process. She uh, missed only one, state corporations. We would never have uh, lactose-free uh, milk, and you know why? Because it is not uh, considered to be an innovative uh, activity. The production, uh, building a chair for a computer is not something innovative. Only high tech is believed to be innovative, like life sciences, electronics, or IT sector uh, belong to innovations. I understand that there are important sectors, but you should have in mind, um, you should be after what really creates value for uh, users, either introduction of new products, new processes, or new marketing innovations, 
on new organizational business models. That is something is uh, defined as innovation. There's the uh, direct uh, definition of innovation, which is recorded by 40 countries. So the, it is the first element, and something which was missing in the report, or was not paid enough attention, was that uh, about cooperation, the innovative activity in the uh, corporate sector. Who knows? Technical company, who is aware of it? Those who made repairs, uh, renovation in your flats, yes. This company has uh, dozens of plants all over the world, and it uh, successfully operates, for instance, in China. Do you think it's an innovative company? They produce construction materials. It is a very innovative company, because if it, if it were not such, it could not compete at other markets. It could not be a success at other markets. So I give you such examples uh, to make understand that this huge uh, 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 level of the economy, which should become uh, which should become uh, competitive, requires this innovative process. And here we encounter several problems. I fully agree with the assessments made uh, or, uh, made in the report and the figures given in the report. We see the same in the figures of the World Economic Forum and Innovation Scoreboard that's of the European Commission. Well, the figures are about the same as for recommendations. The first, the model of uh, public administration. I would like to see specific recommendations like how this model can be built. I hear some ideas about creating hyper-corporations which will govern all innovation processes, something like mega-ministry. And uh, Great Britain is cited as an example. Uh, they have the Department of Innovation. They do not have the Ministry or Department of Industry. In Great Britain, they have the Ministry of Innovations, Skills and Businesses. They do not have Ministry of Industry over there, and they deal with the federal industry, with innovations, with universities, to ensure the necessary link between universities and innovations. So we should be very cautious when we are, uh, if we are going to uh, set up a mega ministry. Well, we say that Ministry of Economics will also take care of innovations all over the country. They might encounter a problem. Well, the Minister of Industry is responsible for chemical industry. So the Minister of Energy is responsible, is liable for the competitiveness of the energy sector. As for agriculture, is the Ministry of Agriculture and Minister of Health is responsible for the activities of the health sector. That's the model of uh, administration that we have. If they're res responsible for competitiveness, they should be responsible for innovations. And the fact that they're not doing so is a huge problem. And their responsibility should not be limited only to state corporations, which get the bulk of the major part of resources and which are not used uh, efficiently. So first is the model of public administration. All countries have coordinating centers, whereas Russia has no coordination center. It should be based in an existing uh, institution or a new commission should be set up, but there should be some, some center which generates uh, overall policy and conducts a monitoring of results. We should have such a center. And secondly, the strategic focus. We can speak endlessly about innovation uh, business, uh, entrepreneurship, which is very important. I believe that there is a huge role of existing institutions. So, though there are some growth problems, the activities of our institutions was very positive, of all without exception. Some of them are worse or better, but there should be three criteria used to assess their work. First, the adequacy of the mission claimed the missions and goals. We have problems in some institutions. I will not give names, no. Second is the scale, the scope of activity. That is how great is the uh, scale of impact of these institutions to achieve uh, some changes in the country. And the third is performance efficiency. 
of what they're doing and what they should do. So, uh, so there are three criteria, and so far there is no clear-cut assessment uh, using this criteria. We do not need the reform of institutions, I'm warning you. Uh, for instance, we can uh, expand the mandate of institutions to lift some restrictions. For instance, the visit of the uh, prosecutor asking uh, uh, questions which do not belong to, uh, uh, which, he, which he needn't ask. So I was, I was told an interesting story. There was a replacement of government in another country, and there were restrictions about payback, which was made a key indicator. And for two years, no grants were issued. When the uh, performance indicators were returned, uh, and the main indicator was how much productivity of labor grew in the companies which received grants, that is the most important indicator. 85%, 85% of all uh, innovations passed through this techist company in Finland. And it is a major factor in enhancing labor productivity. So probably we should change the attitude to these innovation companies and to risk associated with such uh, innovation companies. We should look for and find compromises because we should take into account the risks uh, in the innovation sector and it uh, imposes a lot of restrictions now. It's a threat to innovations. And the last very important thing I would like to say, it was partially mentioned, but it's absolutely critical. It is uh, scientific research. The reform is uh, underway, we know it, but we're not only lagging behind in research, we are at the very bottom. We are among the worst countries in terms of the scope of investments uh, for uh, research. It is absolutely uh, unacceptable. And something else I would like to say about the role of universities. First of all, universities all over the world become the drivers of innovations. We should look at the system of our research institutes, how to integrate them with inst universities. The role of universities should be undoubtedly uh, taken to a different, higher level. I visited the uh, session of the Council on Competitiveness in the United States. Let me share some uh, information about it. It was a closed uh, session, though, for Carnegie Mellon, the rector, was asked why do you have so many startups? What is your main incentives? So uh, do they deal with the results of your research? No, I just want my professors to be rich people. It, well, it sounded as a joke, but it had some truth in it. The figure, uh, 530,000 starts up uh, a month. One of the major restrict restrictions that was named it was a problem in the United States for startups is leadership, insufficient number of leaders. Therefore, they would like to turn to Congress so that foreign uh, students could get a U.S. citizenship together with their diploma. That would be a, a huge blow, not only to the Russian situation, but to Europe as well. And for many other countries, if this happens, because we should recognize that the system of education in the United States is one of the best. Therefore, a lot has to be done. It's a good report, uh, very illustrative, very academic, but these uh, key uh, uh, points should be taken into account. The new model of public management, corporate sector, and uh, science. Thank you very much. It was interesting. It highlights that in the main, uh, modern economy, the main productive resource is human capital. Undoubtedly, it is so, and it is something we omit now, uh, which uh, we invest into the production of uh, uh, steel and iron, like we did in the 
Soviet times. Well, the Soviet Union uh, did overtake the United States in the production of non-ferrous metals, but not because the production was growing so fast in Russia, but but for other reasons. Well, it was meant, one of the speakers said at this forum, when we ran out of petrol uh, in the year 2025, uh, because they're uh, relying on electromobiles, uh, but it's not uh, important. We saw a proverb. Uh, one of the sheikhs said that the stone, uh, uh, stone uh, century finished, not because the stones, they ran out of stones or the uh, 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 copper period ended because uh, uh, copper, we ran out of copper. Well, the internal combustion engines will uh, disappear not because petrol will disappear, and we're in for very complicated times. Let me add something to what Alexander said. The report we're discussing now, there were over the last two years, there were about seven reports on different aspects of innovation and policies and innovation strategies of the Russian Federation. I mean, uh, uh, reports with the participation of the open government. Uh, all of them mentioned the gap between the supply and demand. Well, speaking about uh, businesses, the problem was identified two years ago and reconfirmed now. Let me give me an example. The Skolkova Foundation, which you know all of, during the five years of active activity with startups, only 8,500 applications were filed during five years. This foundation has a lot of advantages for the development of high-tech businesses. Only 1,500 applications were accepted, and it provides benefits, significant benefits. That is 8,500 from all over the country. The foundation does uh, attract startups. They travel all over the country. They create startup villages. Just uh, compared with the figures mentioned by Alexander, 530,000 per month in the United States. So that was the monthly figure. Let me reiterate. Well, certainly 225 will die during the first year, but, well, actually we're approaching, well, we're running out of time, therefore, let's speed up. Sergey, I would like to ask you, as a practitioner, Sergey Epte, managing company leader, you are a practitioner operating uh, as an investor who operates in the Russian innovative uh, environment. Uh, you have a lot of experience of uh, working with uh, startups and the institutes of development. What is your opinion? It's not only about the report. What should the uh, state uh, uh, innovation uh, administration model should look like? And what should be the positive contribution to this process? Thank you very much. Undoubtedly, the contribution from the development institutes is very high. And the state did a lot to support the innov innovation process. There was a comparison in the report of the innovative, comparing the innovative process with the development of football in the country. Well, it's important that innovations were perceived, in, in, uh, perceived as a football or a hockey as the best sports and should not be treated as rugby or grass hockey. Love and ideological support of innovations is something, is the link that is necessary, that we need the development institutes, the investors, the corporations, we need it to, to make the process move properly. Sometimes all participants of the innovative process try to select an elixir of love and to make the entire country love innovations using right KPIs, bonuses, and material incentives. But we understand that 
our success and the country's success back in the 20th century, in the beginning of the 20th century, were based on the ideological support of the trend, which was believed as necessary by the community, by the society. Without ideological support to innovations, it's very difficult to, prov to provide efficient work of the institutions and to ensure a positive process. Uh, we, as a management company, we manage uh, huge funds. We have over 600 billion rubles under our management. We do support innovations, uh, though it is less than 1% in our portfolio. We spent a lot of management efforts for the process. And we know that uh, unless uh, we mutually support startups and young scientists, and unless we consult them and open all doors to them, uh, we can't provide any successful innovation development of uh, Russia. As investors, we talk to big corporations, and uh, the top managers are often interested. However, this uh, does not help to uh, fully introduce innovations, uh, fully develop innovations uh, at the level of a company because uh, the mid-managers may be resistant to do it. They realize all risks and they often don't realize that innovations are needed to them and uh, to the whole country and probably they are needed for the future of the company. And uh, we often can't uh, fight with this resistance. So uh, let me outline that uh, we need uh, to help people understand the significance of innovations and this is important for the whole country and for each person too. Do I understand you correctly that uh, we uh, not only need the national report but also the national idea? Absolutely so. This was what I thought. Dear colleagues, uh, today Alek Famichov, the Deputy Minister of Economic Development of Russia, uh, was supposed to be with us today. Unfortunately, he was unable to come up. He's ill. However, I have mentioned today that uh, during this hour and a half, uh, we have been here, and I have noted Anatoly Chubais here in this room. He is the leader of uh, innovations uh, in Russia. And what is your view on the process of managing innovations? What do you think about it? What should this report be like? I. This is something like a provocation because uh, I have uh, followed your discussion and the report with big interest. I feel there are two levels of our conversation. One level is represented by the report and the comments. I find these comments quite reasonable. I agree basically with most of them. This is all correct, and these are useful things. Uh, I agree with your views on the culture of innovations. This is certainly very important. However, there's another dimension, which is called priorities of politics. What is Russia's current view on innovation economy, innovative economy, and modernization? Is this a priority? And uh, what priority is it? What about uh, the protection of private property, competition, independent judicial system? Are these elements in place? Do they really support and promote innovations? So we, I don't, we don't have enough information on these issues. 
Uh, and you know that uh, now I'm an old conservative and a former uh, young reformer. So these are my thoughts, and I have shared my thoughts with you. Thank you very much for your contribution. Today, uh, we are having another discussion, and we have received many specialists uh, in culture. And uh, we will discuss many cultural aspects of modernization. They are extremely significant, and I fully um, agree with you about institutions. In order to develop the national idea, in order, uh, to uh, in order to help it to survive and develop, we certainly need need some foundation for it, which is the institutions. We only have 10 or 15 minutes left, because at 12, we will have a plenary session, and some of you are supposed to be there. And uh, you, in this case, you have to leave at uh, at least 11.30, otherwise you will be late. And you may not be led uh, to the um, to building number five. And uh, so we only have 10 minutes left. You're very welcome to uh, comment on the uh, material. Uh, and uh, we have a representative of the Ministry of Industry and Trade. Uh, we know uh, this is um, the Ministry of Economic Development is our uh, for ministry in this direction, but uh, this ministry is very ministry of uh, economics and trade is also very important for us. What is your view on the value of this national report on innovations? Could you please give the mic to the person in the first row? He is a representative of the ministry. Uh, good. Good morning, dear colleagues. Unfortunately, Mr. Fomichov was unable to be present at this session. On the whole, uh, we have a positive view on this report of innovations. We share most of its conclusions and uh, recommendations, and uh, they coincide with the current uh, strategy and the new version of the strategy. And still, let me highlight something that we disagree with. I can't say that. I don't want to say that everything is so good. Uh, we disagree about uh, the your view on the mega regulator. Currently, uh, we have uh, uh, the Council of uh, Modernization and its presidium. And I think uh, they could play the role of this mega regulator. So this uh, technological initiative uh, is uh, really based on the markets. We really help to create the environment for innovations in terms of personnel training, education, and the dissemination of uh, innovations, mitigating risks and increasing tolerance to risks. However, the uh, commercial stage is still a problem. It used to be a problem, and it still is. I hope that this uh, in initiative may help to merge the um, industrial sector, the commercial sector, and R&D. I hope that uh, commercial business companies uh, will increase their R&D work, and also I hope that it will help to change the attitude of private business. So. Summing up what we need is a um, competitive environment and institutions. Good morning, dear colleagues. I am Deputy Director of Strategic Development of the Ministry of uh, Industry and Trade. I don't have any critical comments on the report, and we actively participated in uh, developing it. 
we, for instance, contributed some engineering cases. We did that in collaboration with Ministry of Education. Jointly, we have created uh, 30 centers of innovations on the universities, and uh, all some of uh, these centers are independent entities that already earn on innovations. Uh, they vary in uh, success and in their earnings. However, on the whole, this is very successful development, and uh, they are oriented at uh, real business and industrial demands. I remember our forum in Sochi, organized uh, by Russian venture company, where we discussed new um, sectors and branches, and uh, m most of them are interdisciplinary. I think in this sense, the National Technical Initiative is a pilot program. Currently, uh, we have several uh, roadmaps, uh, for instance, Marinet, Aeronet, and ITNet. And, uh, well, probably uh, what we need is another column uh, with a car and a cab with horses, uh, which you showed in your slides. As you know, uh, we will uh, create the Agency of Federal Development, as uh, proposed by the President in his uh, address to the Federal Assembly. Uh, one of our goals will be localization of uh, industries in Russia. Uh, we have endorsed a new law on uh, the on industrial policy, and we now try to attract uh, this law aims uh, to uh, create incentives for both local and uh, foreign investors. So uh, we are working on this roadmap jointly uh, with uh, some with the Institute of Development. Uh, one of the directions is the export of uh, high-tech products, and uh, probably our uh, share uh, will increase uh, as compared to, and, uh, uh, as compared to uh, the past years. And uh, recently, we have amended uh, some laws and regs on export. Now, the government will uh, support the export of high-tech products more. Thank you. Thank you so much for your comment. Dear colleagues, we only have time for two or three questions. I felt uh, that uh, someone uh, raised his hand or her hand before. I think there was a lady in the middle of this room. Could you please pass the mic on to this lady? <coughs> please introduce yourself and uh, I am, my name is Valeria Stefievska. I represent the R&D center called Expert. I fully agree with the outlined problems. The first one is uh, the quality of projects. And uh, I have a question in this respect. The Russian Venture Company website uh, gives some statistics on the recent uh, projects and their funding split by regions. I think uh, these figures are very sad. For instance, Krasnoyarsk and uh, a Siberian Federal University received no funding at all. Why so? I can explain that. Some the regional uh, investment uh, programs are 
handled by our regional partners. We have five partners in Tomsk, about four or three partners in Kazan, about ten partners in St. Pete, while we have no partners at all. They deal with the seed investors. Uh, so I, I re I'm really sorry, but it's your problem, not money. And uh, the regions that are eager to uh, develop, uh, create new institutions and create companies that become our partners. So you need a relevant regional infrastructure. Well, how about the problem of uh, assessment quality? Is when, how do you choose uh, the projects for funding? Please do not mix up venture investment and uh, venture investment and funding. Well, uh, venture investment uh, programs give uh, financial returns. They are different uh, from funded projects. I represent the Moscow Department of Education. We will not have new scholars unless we involve the secondary school. And uh, otherwise, uh, we will have no good students. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. We have uh, this gentleman, please. I'm Sergei Vodopetov. I'm Deputy Minister on Information of uh, Moscow Region on Information Policy. Uh, we have not uh, mentioned uh, the so called uh, R&D towns today, or I think uh, they are to be supported. There are 13 of them, and five of them are supported. The report does not um, mention anything about these centers. This was my first comment. And second, what about the definition of innovations? The system of accounting innovations may be represented by uh, four ideas uh, for definitions of uh, Russian uh, Statistics Committee. I think uh, we should... Uh, and uh, what about the reporting system? All uh, reporting forms have been developed by the Russian Statistics Committee. But I think uh, there should be some unified reporting system. And the same forms should go to the Statistics Committee, uh, the uh, Tax Authority, and so on. What about investing in uh, R&D? I think... Uh, The, according to law number uh, 44, the company, there's uh, some legal gap, and the company often does not have the official right to apply for a patent. And uh, these are big figures. Yes, uh, thank you. Let me, uh, R&D towns are really a very valuable resource. Uh, however, this is the legacy of the previous industrial epoch. Right now, uh, the whole world has uh, another trend. It's the concentration of um, uh, science and uh, innovations around universities, uh, which become something like an incubator or extended campuses. I think we should transit from traditional Russian RNZ towns to university campuses, uh, which are now underdeveloped, excluding, I think, uh, 
the campus and university in Novosibirsk. They should grow and breed startups and new businesses. 95% of all American startups uh, were developed uh, by uh, the graduates of uh, the four leading universities. And I think this uh, process goes normally from the bottom uh, to the top. And uh, I can mention one uh, town, uh, Periyaslav Zaleski. It's a small town in Moscow region. And it gave uh, rise to the whole uh, university and innovations. And because most of uh, lecturers uh, at these uh, universities are practical scholars involved in research and innovations. Uh, and this combination is very valuable. While uh, traditional, traditional R&D towns have no universities, and this is a drawback. I would like now uh, to give the floor to Mr. Levchuk. He's in the first row. Uh, uh, yes, uh, as to your question, uh, we yes, I, I promised to give the floor to Mr. Levchuk, and I'm very sorry. I will give the floor to you after he says a few words. Just wait a couple of minutes. Please give over the microphone to the first row. Uh, uh, good morning. I would love to draw everybody's attention to the fact that uh, we have a clear-cut section of what to do, but who will do it. The last year's experience comes from uh, project institutions uh, which exist in different forms. Our personal participation in the work of a project institute is a Russian expert center. It's a very, they have a very fine and clear-cut work to coordinate different policies, uh, industrial anti-monopoly export, and it will take a year. And we are lacking such uh, project institutions. Well, something about. Uh, uh, we speak about uh, project technologies that needs an uh, institution as well. So the dead valley from the Institute of Startup, but there is dead valley from uh, startup like for Gazelle uh, development. <clears throat> First of all, we should uh, exit to uh, international markets. Only then you can be successful if you want to be a globally successful. And one of the instruments that could be used, uh, it's an easy one, it's not a mega regulator, but setting up narrow uh, research institutions to go into special uh, uh, topics like transport technologies, input substitution, that's a, a must. It's the uh, something like project office. In the presidential address to the Federal Assembly, it was said though it was not very specifically. But it's something very close to what you said. I'm not speaking about money. So uh, it's not what matters. No, ma so uh, it was said that, it was mentioned that no money is forthcoming and okay with it. But the most important thing is to coordinate and resolve all bottlenecks. And I think the result was excellent. Taking this uh, chance to be in the same hall with Mr. Chubais. I would like to ask a question to Mr. Chubais. I'm Professor Andres Landaus Mangola. I'm from Spain. I work at the Plekhanov's uh, Russian Economic Institute University. The question is, as far as I understand, is the most uh, the breakthrough uh, area in the innovation sphere is nanotechnology that Mr. Chubais is in charge of. Do you have examples of most successful, or just give names of two or three projects, which could do away without major venture investments? Those relying only on a project support, project financing. Are you ready, prepared to comment on this? 
We have about 80 projects, and among them, there are unsuccessful ones, some medium uh, success, and there are some uh, such you are asking about. To give you examples of projects that used venture support and are at the level of higher than the world level, not at the world level, but higher than the world level. So the first of them is Elvis Company, which designed a unique system of image recognition that made it a Russian development. It used the 65 nanometer crystal and created a line of final devices, of final products, starting from video cameras, which are capable of recognizing images and dozens of practical applications, starting from the simplest one, like reading the recording the numbers of um, automobiles of cars at the parking lots, and ending up with the uh, special sy airport systems, which uh, identifies non-typical actions and gestures of passengers. That's one example. And, and we think it's not uh, we, uh, the business result that matters, but the fact that the uh, science and technical level of the project is higher than the global. And we see a lot of interest uh, from the West to our company. Another example where all IP belongs to Russia, intellectual property belongs to Russia, is the Novosibirsk company, Axion, which has, uh, has been producing nanotubes, and we uh, uh, convinced that we are talking about the addition of an additive, special additive, which is added to the basic material, and it uh, increases its uh, properties, electrical properties, strength properties, etc., etc. So nanotubes can do it. We knew it before, but we really brought the technology to industrial production. In the, it was in 2013, no, 2014, we produced 200 kilograms of nanotubes. Last year, we produced uh, 1,200, uh, and now we'll produce from three to 5,000 uh, tons. We shall dominate the world market, and Russia will be a leader in this sector uh, for the nearest five to seven years. And the size of the market will be will amount to dozens of billion dollars, and we have a chance to become a global leader in this product. Thank you, colleagues. I suggest that we wind up uh, this optimistic note address. I would like to thank the speakers, to the to the listeners.